This is Joel. He was a proud member of the Two Heart Club until tragedy struck. Joel was building a tree and he fell and died. This wouldn't have happened if Joel had scaffolding. Buy scaffolding today and you too can live. This message brought to you by Bamboo Two Heart Gang and subscribe to Smallish Beans. Please do. But please. Before we start today's video, I've been doing a lot of trading and AFKing on the server, just trying to get some emeralds. And this wandering villager just turned up at my house. And look at this. This pickaxe, Stonebreaker, for 25 diamonds. Mending, fortune, and breaking five. Miner's fervor, efficiency five. Boom. Let's get that. That is nuts. That's like an end game pickaxe right there. Also, my mending villager also now sells this book called Magnetic, which I just bought one of them. I'm going to put it on this new pickaxe. As I'm pretty sure it means when you mine stuff, all blocks will be magnetized to you. We'll real name that pickaxe at the same time. To pickaxe, Jeremy. Let's try it out. Yeah, there you go instantly into your inventory. That's so good. Anyway, welcome back to X-Life. We're on episode three here. It is raining, which is unfortunate, and we've got some big plans for today. First thing, I just want to have a quick look at Moo Moo Meadows here. Wow, Lizzie really has got quite a lot of cows, doesn't she? Ring the bell a couple of times, nothing happens, but just wanted to. So one thing that's new is that I kind of added this sort of like little quick bone meal system here. We got a bit from just putting seeds in as we were doing this with our farm a lot. It's just so easy to get all your wheat and I was trading with my villager. And the thing I want to do is organize my villagers. At the moment, they're kind of stuck in this little hole down here. They're probably quite miserable. We've got a farmer now and we've got two librarians at the moment. But obviously, I want to get more. But seeing as it's so easy to move these guys with a lasso, I was thinking we could build somewhere for them to go. And then we can just plop them in for now until we can convert them to zombies and then back again. But because of the lasso, they're so easy to move around that... There's just no harm in it. And I thought a nice location for this would be just over there, maybe. We're going to have to do a bit of clearing out. But I think it could look quite cute. As it doesn't need to be massive, as we don't have lots of villagers right now. Obviously, in the future, we'll probably move them when we make our proper base, as this is still just our starter base. But with the lasso, that should be easy. Now, no one was on the server to turn it to day, so I thought I'll let it be nighttime and I'll try and kill some mobs. And I managed to get some slime. Plus, after I slept, I got a load of string. So I cleared out a little bit of space over there, as you can see. But before we got around to building it, I did a little live stream as I wanted to get some XP. I need to get 40 XP and it took two and a half hours. Yep, I I'm not joking. I did a lot of mining. We got some diamonds. In fact, let me show you. We've got lots of redstone, coal, etc. Lots of cobble, lots of blocks. 47 diamonds, which we've actually spent some already to make the shield. And we've got some emeralds as well. It was successful, but most importantly, we got some enchanting levels, so we now have an enchanted obsidian chest plate with fire protection 5 and breaking 6, occult aversion, which I don't know what that does, and fawns too. But I attempted to convert my zombie spawner into a zombie mob farm, and it went terribly because I didn't use the tutorial, and I tried to basically guess, and it ended up going horribly, horribly, horribly wrong. So we're going to go fix that now, and I'm going to follow the tutorial, and we're going to get it working. But while we were here, this is the mob spawner down here in my attempt, it went terribly. We actually found, if we head this way, another spawner. A spider spawner to be exact. And it's just a normal spider spawner, not a poison one as well, which is wonderful. So we probably set that up at some point. And you can actually use silk touch on the spawners apparently. So I'll have to do that at some point and maybe move it. So let's fix this up quickly and hopefully we should be able to get it working. All right, I think I've fixed this thing. Start testing it out. Zombies have started spawning in. See you later, fella. Enjoy your life down there. I'm going back this way. And zombies should hopefully drop in to this. Let's see if it works. Nice. They're starting to drop in. I can just stand here, kill them, get the XP. Loot goes into the hoppers, which should go into this chest down here. Nice. So now we can just AFK this place. We can get a load of rotten flesh, which can actually be turned into leather. Also, thanks to Scott, who gave me some soul sand. I need to get a sweeping edge sword, but apart from that, this setup's pretty perfect. And right now, of course, it looks so ugly. But obviously, we can decorate in the future. But right now, it's just the XP that we need desperately. So let's just, like, AFK here a bit. I'm going to make sure this place is nice and lit up around here so nothing can come get me. As at the moment, it's just a mess. An absolute mess. So I've been AFKing here not too long, to be honest. And we've already got level 40 enchantments again. And all this stuff. Our sword has looting free. So we're just getting loads of rotten flesh. I've actually got stuff I want to do. So we're not going to sit here 
all day. But we will enchant one more piece of armor. And normally, I would probably enchant my legs next. But seeing as this is X-Life, I'm going to try and get Feather falling on some boots. It's a bit of a risk. But let's see if we get it. Please. Oh my gosh, that is terrible. I don't even want that. I know I said we got stuff to do. I'm going back. I'm getting level 40 enchantment again. But thanks to all that rotten flesh, we can actually label these chests with ease now, as we have so much leather. What I've come to learn is I don't have anywhere near enough storage here. So lots of stuff is going to stay in backpacks. But I think our first shop is definitely going to be a leather shop. All right, round two. I see Depth Strider. That's pretty good. But do we get feather falling? No. All right. Well... That's a shame, but I'm also lazy, so we'll use these for now. Depth Strider 4 is good. So we're going to get working on our little structure over here, and I've come up with what I think is a pretty cool design. So it's time for Lazy Beans to make an appearance as we progress into a time lapse. Now, I wasn't sure how this was going to look in this location, but it ended up looking better than I could ever imagine. We used some orange terracotta plus some acacia stripped wood, and I think it turned out looking really nice. We made this sort of really cool, like, flowing roof, added a chimney on it, of course, and it fits in really well with my other house. Very overgrown, very nice looking. But of course, it has to be functional. So inside, we made it look very nice. You may notice that all the blocks disappeared that's because this happened basically my axe thought that this was a tree so it destroyed every block that was there cool and there's still a little bit that's not finished but let's have a look yes i'm liking it i think it fits in really well if i pan out all the way over here very nice when you get this waterfall done in the middle oh it's gonna look so good but you can kind of see there, it's sort of like missing a bit. I might bring it down to the water. I need to extend the grass out a bit further though before we do that. But I'm really liking how this is looking. If we head inside, you can see how we're going to have it set up. So I put the bookshelves here because I thought we'd have our librarians on this side. And then we'll have our farmers on this side. Those are the only villages we have at the moment. In the future, I think I might add in maybe like another layer maybe down here i'll just like have a little staircase down or like a ladder and we'll have like some layers underneath as well underground that could look quite cool but i'm happy with it i think it's a really nice addition and we're gonna work on this waterfall a bit later however for now i've been messaging Fwip as he has got a bit of a slime farm going and i said i'd do a little trade with him for some slime balls which he's giving me here 32 I will give him a magnetic book. All right, so let's get one of these magnetic books. It only costs us five emeralds. And we're going to head to Fwip's house, which I'm pretty sure isn't too far away from spawn. So we'll head there on our waystone. Fwip has a beacon? I'm jealous. And bamboo. I'm even more jealous. I like his house. Very nice, very nice. He's got a bit of iron for that beacon. Decent. Right, let's click his waystone. And we'll leave a little chest just here with the magnetic book. There we go. Sorted. And then we can just head home from here. So I forgot to record it, but I just traded with Callum a stack of leather for a diamond. I'm not sure if that's too cheap, but we're getting quite a lot of leather. Like I've got a load smelting in here, as you can see. So I feel like one diamond is very reasonable for how much leather we are currently receiving. But I think it's time we started getting some villagers over here. I want to get some better lecterns in there first, though. Because at the moment we just have the default oak ones. And luckily now we have so much leather and we have so much sugar cane that we can just make these bookshelves with ease. Just like that. 64 bucks. Lovely. I do need to get an automated sugar cane farm sorted though at some point because having to mine all myself is quite annoying. So here we go. We've got four spruce lecterns. Plot those in there. They look very nice. Now thanks to Fwip, we can make our own lasso. Beautiful. Right. Let's start moving these villages over. And I was thinking, right... We need another bridge because having to go over this bridge and all the way around there is a bit of a pain. So if we made a bridge from here to here, that would be perfect. I'll have to get designing one. But first, let's move these villagers. First, our mending villager. Perfect. He's locked in. And we'll put the silk touch dude next to him. Lovely. I have these item frames here to indicate what they have. I might just get a block and rename it. But... To be honest, I don't really need to at the moment because there's only two of them in here. Now, before we build that bridge, there's one thing I want to do, and that is to document the progress we make on this area. I saw Green do this on Hermitcraft recently. However, he did a bit late. We're getting in there really early. We're going to make some maps as we've got quite a lot of materials right now. 
All right, let's map out this area. And we're going to place them on the wall just here behind my bed. This is not really where I was going to put my bed, but I kind of just ran out of space in here. But I think this is a good spot for it. Just realized I forgot to actually lock the map, so that would have been a disaster. There we go. We might move its location at some point, but as you can see, we've got a pretty good shot of the top-down view here. My house. We've got Lizzie's house and... Moo Moo Meadows. We'll hopefully update this in about 10 episodes time and hopefully lots of stuff will have changed. But anyway, I think it's bridge time. So I didn't want to make this bridge too different to the other one, so I kept it with a very similar style. However, it is slightly different in quite a few ways as well. I did the bridge curving underwards this time rather than over the top like it was before. And I used some of the bunting that is in the Fairy Lights mod to decorate it to make it look all nice on the top. On top of that, I also added in some fairy lights, some lanterns, some flower pots on the side. I just wanted to make this thing look really nice. And I used some spruce hedges underneath and then obviously we had to make it look nice on this side as well which means sacrificing part of our wheat farm and there you go that makes the entrance to that place look a lot better i still need to sort out this front bit here as i'm not really liking the grass i want to kind of make it look like that a little bit but this bridge is very useful for getting across to this place now i like it a lot. We're going to move this wheat farm around in a little bit. I've actually planted some carrots and stuff as well here. And we're going to sort of like gate it off, have like a little fenced off area here and make some paths coming through this area. And we'll have some more stuff over here as well. But yeah, I think that area is looking really nice. I hope these villagers start breeding again. I was having trouble. They just weren't breeding, which is not good. We need more baby villagers, but these guys seem to be happy now. Take all this bread. Oh, that one worked. We've got a baby. Hey, there we go. We've got two new babies. And with that, I'm going to move this farmer dude as well over to the little farming section over here. Nice. Also, I had to switch these lecterns out to normal oak lecterns as they wouldn't regen the trades from the spruce ones, which is a shame. Now, the final thing we're going to do today is we're going to get this sorted out. I'm not sure if we'll get the waterfall in fully, but what we are going to get sorted is our route down to our zombie XP farm. As at the moment, we are literally just taking like a spiral block staircase and it takes like a minute to get down whereas I want to just have a hole and a bubble elevator to get us up so we're probably going to have to work it out on the coordinates and then dig up just so I make sure I don't dig down and fall into lava or whatever but first we need to sort out this little cave area here and actually make it look nice I forgot to mention another thing I did on my stream was that everyone said I should leave this here it says happy early birthday her birthday's in October mine's actually before hers and we left a magnetic book a mending book and a silk touch book as well I thought that'd be quite a nice gift for her to when she logs back in but anyway right now what we're gonna get working on is that cave I'm not gonna time lapse this but when I cut back in a second it should hopefully be looking very nice bada bing bada boom yes i'm liking it so in here we've added in a few chests not too many because i think i'm gonna have some downstairs as well i put a crafting table here i think i might add in some other like little things like an anvil maybe as well but i do want to have like a super smelter but i think i'll have that underground near the zombie farm so we can smell all our rotten flesh into leather but i've taken the coordinates of the two points here you can see one and you can see the other so we're going to figure out where they are underground in relation to the zombie spawner and then we can dig up and then dig back down and get this sorted as an elevation system so funnily enough had to move these because i had one here originally where the chests were it went directly inside where the zombies spawn so obviously that wasn't gonna be very suitable so i had to move it to here so we've got our bubble elevator here and we've got our hole here and honestly this is like the most scariest thing on x life but look at this <sighs> We're safe. We're good. And we got the one back up all the way over here. It takes quite a while to get up. We're sorted. Look at that. Problem is, it's not super close to where we are. We've got to go through here and then to the right here. And then we get to where we kill our zombies. But it's so much better than before. And obviously, we're going to expand this area down here. Make this into like a little underground area. And then we've also got the spider spawner over there as well. Which we're probably going to move. As that's a little bit too out of the way now. Kind of want them all on the same level. We might move it to over there or something or have them next to each other but this little cave bit is looking nice however it could look nicer i think we might get started on the waterfall we're probably not going to finish it i kind of want to work out how the water is going to fall into here might take a bit of planning but i think we could make it look 
pretty nice. Let's get working on it, shall we? And we didn't do it for the cave, but we're going to bring back Lazy Beans. And he's going to stare at us as we build. So it was kind of tricky to get this right. I eventually got there, though, I think, using a lot of stone, cobblestone, and mossy cobblestone, plus some leaves to make this thing look pretty good. I think it looks pretty cool when you walk through it, as I will show you right now. I haven't really looked at this from far away yet, so let's have a step back and... Nice. Yes, it's looking good. The top still needs some working on, I think. We need to sort of like work out what we're going to do up there. I'm not entirely sure yet. It'd be cool to have like a building up there, like a windmill or something towering over. But from this angle, this thing is looking good. I've sort of done a bit of like terraforming and used some coarse dirt and like added some rocks in around here and I think it's looking nice. And this is the walk through underneath. You can see here we've got like a couple of walls and stuff. It's looking cool and you get through and you can come to the villagers. It's awesome. I'm loving this place. It would be awesome to have a building up there now I think about it, but what could I put up there? Maybe you guys could let me know in the comments if you've got any ideas, because it's not going to be something I'm going to be accessing a lot. We could have like a pumpkin and melon farm and then have them all come down into like a collection area amidst the mountain. That could be really cool. Oh my gosh, look at this axe. 20 emeralds. We might be able to buy that. Although it's not as good as a lumber axe. That's nuts. Nice. All right. Well, that's not going to be as good as a lumber axe for chopping trees and stuff. But when I'm building and stuff, I've been using this redstone axe. So I can get rid of that now. Use this instead. What does this look like? Oh my gosh. What? It's literally instant. Look, that's insane. Now, I've been getting a lot of potatoes from my farm. I kind of want to get a new villager who will give me emeralds for potatoes. So we're going to do that quickly. Shouldn't take too long as we've been breeding these guys. We can also breed a few more. There we go, potato guy. I'll trade with him. We'll lasso him. Hopefully these guys should give a baby now. I don't know why it's capped to six, but it is. So I guess we'll just leave it at six in here. Let's put this other farmer in here and then we can trade all our potatoes with him. And because of that trade, we just hit level 40 enchanting levels, which means we can enchant another bit of armor. Let's do our helmet to see if we can get some like aqua affinity or something like that. And we'll save the legs for last. Respiration? four and fire protection pretty interesting i think we we're probably going to just change all these up at some point but hey less likely to drown now and drowning is bad in this because you take one heart of damage from drowning so i think next time we're going to be working on this area over here hopefully creating a pumpkin and melon farm which means we, we have to go to the nether guys I'm, I'm i'm scared but i think i can take the challenge last going to be it for this episode of x life though thank you so much for watching make sure to leave a like and comment if you did enjoy it and subscribe to make sure you catch the next episode i shall see you another time